All right, so we're here with the woman of the hour, Margot Pellegrino, who, congratulations for making it in. Oh, thank you. It's good to be here. I had a lot of help getting in today. It was just absolutely amazing. Yeah, I I'm noticed you had an army to help you out, which is great. And we talked with June earlier about your mission. What got you interested in the ocean specifically? You know, I always took the ocean for granted because um, my dad's father was a Methodist minister and in, you know, in, in New Jersey. And so it was up and down with all the little coastal towns, a lot of them, you know, like Long Branch. And, well, you wouldn't know because this is the... East Coast, I mean, West Coast, and it's on the East Coast. But anyway, so I was always at the, the shore, and I just, you know, it's something that's always been there, but I thought this is, you know, it is kind of like our last wild place. Yeah. I mean, this is our easiest access for most people to some place that's completely wild, you know, and it's just, um, it really is the heartbeat of the planet, I think. it's It controls our climate, food source, jobs. You mentioned an interesting point that people take it for granted. I remember hearing stories about people, much like the Western frontier, before we, let's say, conquered the United States, that it was limitless. It just went on forever. You could see as far on the horizon, this big blue thing never ended. And I think with that comes the misunderstanding that it's a limitless resource, so we can abuse it. You hear that with space now. Let's throw our junk out in space. Yeah. Let's send it to the sun. You've been asked a lot of similar questions, I'm sure. You know, it's like when somebody does anything that is newsworthy, they always get asked the same questions. What question haven't you been asked that you think is important that people are aware of? You know, that's a good question. And actually, I haven't thought about that question. <laughs> um, you know, I can't think of one off the top of my okay, head. Okay, no problem. Let, yeah. let me ask you an easier one then. What's going through your mind generally as you're out there paddling all by yourself? Uh, gosh, um, that's easy. I mean, I think of like deep thoughts and then I think of really shallow thoughts. Like, hey, give me a deep one, give me a shallow one. Okay, why do we flush our toilets with drinking water? Seriously. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, you know, and then you start thinking about like, wow, you know, there are things that we could do to remedy that and to make it so that we're using gray water and we could set up, you know, and then of course that feeds into another thought because, you know, we don't really need big power companies. We could actually generate our own power ourselves, you know, like with, between solar and wind. I bet that a lot of people um, could live off the grid. You know, I mean, it's one, of course, it's one thing if you're like in an apartment building in, in a city. But, you know, I mean, really, individuals could be back living off the grid and being a lot more independent than, you know, and a lot less beholden to big companies than we are. Do you, don't you think that message, though, is contrarian to what makes this, this society, the United States, tick? No, absolutely not. Because this society has always about, I think, has always been about um, the the promise and of the individual and an individual's potential. You know, we could, people could live off the grid. They really could. And you can be independent. Like, you don't need probably half of the stuff that you have. Be happy, you know, and, and then this is, see, these are the deep thoughts. <laughs> these are deep. No, these are comp. I'm telling you what you asked for. But, you know, and like, once to live in a dirty environment, you're going to eventually get sick from it. Um, you know, but what is good for our environment is also good for us to walk more, exercise more, eat locally. You know, seriously, it's it really it, it benefits us. So, like, why wouldn't you do these things? They're easy, they're fun, and it's, um, you know, the more you can think of how you don't have to rely on the big corporation, the better. I think it, it's kind of I don't know. It, it's a, it's a little freeing, mm -hmm. you know. It's it's a really freeing. So you have these deep thoughts, you have these complex thoughts. What overall do you feel like as this is paddle number what four yeah. for you? How does it change each time that you do this? How does it evolve into this current trip from Seattle to San Diego? Well, you know, it, it is funny because there's definitely an evolution and in, in the uh, with how these things work. And you know, the first paddle was really like you know, I, I I probably did a lot more planning and outreach for that trip than I unfortunately did for this one. I just didn't have the network though on the West Coast, you know, and, and David Helvarg had suggested, and I thought that's a really good idea, you know, to get the ocean mission, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And, you know, the, the Pacific is big and cold and more gnarly than, than the East Coast. But, you know, fortunately, there wasn't anything more than what I could handle. And, you know, I was able to get through the rough spots okay. The best thing is to really try to reach out more with the groups. I'd like to really focus on 
you know, it's, it's funny because each one, it's like you can see where the shortfalls are and the shortcomings are. And it's like, okay, I got to improve it next time. Do more outreach, work with kids. You know, I really, you know, think a lot of um, hope for the future is with our kids. Yeah, they are our future. They really are. So we got to kind of clean up our, you know, we got to kind of clean up things for them. We can't leave them with a mess. You know, I mean, you we know? can all do something, you know, to help make things better. Mm -hmm. Pick up David Helvarg's um, 50 Ways to Save the Ocean. It's, you know, it's, it's great. We so need to almost reinvent ourselves, I think. I think, frankly, our country and maybe the planet just needs to take a step back and think about what's important in life. And, you know, it's not the things that you acquire. It's not, you know, the car you drive or the monster house. Well, I hope that, you know, our American ingenuity, we can figure things out. I mean, I don't think we're going to be saved by technology necessarily. I think we're going to be saved by, um, you know, a, a mindset change. You know, we're, we're messing things up. We just need to pull back mm -hmm. a little bit. Right. You know? Welcome to Ventura. It's great to have you here. You're an inspiration to us all, and good luck on the rest of your trip. <laughs> Thank you. You bet. Thanks. <laughs> For the Surf and River Report, this is Brian Von Diedenroth with Margot Pellegrino on her way, on her epic voyage to San Diego.